Peace. It is the guy, Anti Simp, back with a new video. And I wanted to talk about something on Twitter earlier. Apparently, uh, a lot of women were sharing their dating experiences on Hinge and they called them horror stories. And they ended up getting this hashtag trending on Twitter called Hinge is Ghetto. And I had caught this one woman who made a tweet in this and she said, you know, are you guys deepening the imbalance? The worst scenario a guy has shared has been a broke woman with two who being too ungrateful and women are out here dating real life abusers and necrophiles. So I retweeted her and said that I see we see red flags. We as men see red flags and we avoid y'all. Y'all see red flags and it becomes rocket science. And you know, I added some emojis and laughter because it was hilarious because women have it easy when it comes to dating and they just continuously choose to date losers. And despite the fact that they're in a um, advantage position, they still choose to date losers no, despite the fact that they att attract many different guys. And speaking from a black man's perspective, Dating black men is like dating on easy mode as long as you are a normal woman. The perks of dating black men, and I've said this in the past because women of other groups have said this about us, and these tend to be the facts. They, they say many different things about men that can be applied to all men, but the things that they've actually said that are perks of dating black men are things that can only be applied to us. Like for instance, they said that we have a willingness to in, to listen to their input, which means we aren't like typically like di dictators of like other groups of men are. You know, we listen to their input, we think about what they say, and we may or may not, based off of our own assessment of situations, we may or may not apply that what they said to situations. We may listen, we may uh, follow through on it based off of our own judgment of the uh, our own uh, knowledge of what they say you know so uh, we have a willingness to listen to their input they've also said that we are typically in better shape than other groups of men and they also like us because our penis sizes these are only these are facts that only can only be applied to black men i can't help you if you feel some type of way about it and you're a non-black dude i don't know what to tell you these are basically their they're sharing their opinions this is why we are considered the um uh, most desired worldwide in places that they don't have Western influence, and our standards, our standards of black men uh, tend to be simple. Like they, they, they tend to be basic standards. We like attractiveness. We like women to be attractive. We like women to be in reasonable shape. We like curves, normal, natural curves. We accept a little bit of stomach because that comes with the curves, but it can't be overbearing. And lastly, we like women who are submissive. Those are three things. Attractiveness, in reasonable shape, and submissiveness. And really the submissive thing is for all guys. You know, white men might not like curves, but they do like submissive women. You know, all guys do. So it's like completely impossible to mess it up with us, but females tend to do. They act like this is rocket science when it comes to dating. And that's crazy. You know, a lot of them aren't going to make it out here. A lot of them are going to end up dying alone because they have these perceptions and they have an unwillingness to change and be reasonable with their standards. As I've heard Kevin Samuels, Kevin Samuels say in the previous videos, you know, uh, if they were willing to accept the fact that they were average, like some of these women would accept the fact that they're average and um, get with guys who are more their speed, then they, they would be happy. They would be happy. But no, they got to have these, un, these crazy unrealistic standards that no other groups of women have. And then when these type of guys don't exist... Or they're, these type of guys aren't willing to settle for them. Like they like to say that they're not going to settle for less. But the guys that they want aren't going to settle for them either. 
they are not willing to be reasonable and realistic about their situations. I remember doing a video uh, a couple weeks ago about, I, I said in this video, that a man would have to be out of his mind. Uh, no man with sense would wait. And I was in uh, in a conversation to a woman that I was talking to off of uh, Bumble who had three kids and then she did it the right way. She got married, she had killed children, but the guy that she was dating, so from her perspective, was a loser. You know, I, I don't really believe it because um, it's just too convenient to, for women to just make themselves look good in situations. They were just this really good woman in their marriage, and then the guy was just a piece of trash. And, you know, they ended up having to get a divorce because that's where they were headed at. Um, this chick. Uh, I had presented this chick a scenario because I asked her what type of guy was she looking for, just to humor this. And she said she wanted a guy that had a good job and, you know, was all these other things. Uh, he made a good income. And I asked her, you know, what was that? And, um, no, I asked her what kind she asked, she said that she wanted a guy that had a good income or whatever the case is. And I, I asked her, um, like, what, what, what does that mean? What does those things mean? And, um... Well, actually, no, no, no. I'm, I'm tripping. Because it's been so... I had to, um, I ended up having to roast her and block her. So I'm kind of re remembering this um, differently. But when I was talking to her, I had asked her... I basically... Um, she said a guy that was like content with... you know, He was making um, money for whatever his situation... Whatever reason it was for... She was looking for a guy that was um, doing well for himself. That's what she said. She said he was doing well for himself. And I said, what did that mean? And she said, you know... Somebody who was, you know, financially uh, uh, good, you know, somebody who's, you know, making decent money. And I had presented her with a scenario of a guy who worked a minimum wage job and he had no debt, but he had to, um, he rented a room, basically. Uh, he, he found a way to get to work, however he, got, he, get to, however he, could, get, he could get to work. Uh, I said that, you know, all of the expenses were taken care of. She didn't have to worry about this guy, basically. And she was yelling and snapping about how she couldn't mess with a guy like that because what could he do for her? And that was not what her original statement was. Her original statement was asking, her original statement was that she wanted a guy that was doing, you know, good for himself. And a guy like that, I presented a scenario with him and he was making a minimum wage, but he was doing well for himself. And she was talking, you know, mad trash about him. Like he couldn't do anything for her. And she made like four times his income. And I would later find out that she doesn't even have what she's looking for in this guy. She's living at home with her parents after her divorce. Um, she was in debt. Uh, she had just paid off some of the debt she accumulated from her previous relationships. And um, she still had student loan debt to, uh, to worry about. Meanwhile, this is a guy who was not making as much money as she was making. But he not only was he uh, in a position to actually do better you know let's say for instance he's making minimum wage but he gets a promotion because he's doing really well at his job or he starts a side hustle that can turn into a business so then he's able to grow but she didn't want to give this type of guy at that time of day and i couldn't help but laugh at the situation because she wasn't doing that well for herself as my homeboy had pointed out when women like to talk about us um wanting to trap those women only mess with us uh because us for our money and meanwhile, women over here try to use us for our money as well. And I got to point out the fact that, you know, you could probably take a woman from overseas. And this is something my homeboy has said as well. You could probably take a woman from overseas. Uh, put advice against this, but this is, this is again, this is a scenario, a hypothetical. Take a woman over here to the U.S., uh, send her through, uh, put her through school, and she wouldn't be in, in nearly as much uh, financial turmoil as a woman is over here. You know, you could have student loans paid off and then she would be in the plus mode. She would be in a plus zone. You know, she'd be bringing in extra income right on top of, you know, whatever income you're bringing in. Whereas the women over here, they have horrible financial ma uh, management, money management skills. On top of being horrible in relationships. So, they can't even be realistic about the simple, uh, about their standards. When... As I said, dating black men is like dating on easy mode. Giving all of the things I told you, our standards are basic standards. Uh, the simple things that women like about us that can only be applied to us. And yet females still tend to mess this up. 
So, I've been, you know, and so I'm seeing other guys say the same thing. And there's even statistically, uh, st statistical facts being brought up that one in four black women will marry in their lifetime. So when I'm thinking about the chick that uh, I was talking to a couple weeks ago, and you know she's already been married, that's it for her. She wants to be married again, but she's not even being realistic, realistic about her standards. And like on top of that, she used to say that you know she said the guy that made minimum wage couldn't do anything about her. She wanted to be going on two hundred dollars days, but she's a coupon clipper, a penny pincher. She pointed out that he would be pinching pennies or whatever case of saving every dime he got. And I'm like, you don't know what he could do with, with the money he got, you know. If he manages money correctly and he, um, um, yeah, if he manages money correctly, he could have enough money left over, at least $200 left over after, you know, all his expenses. If he's renting a room. Renting a room, he don't have to worry about any other uh, utility bills. It's just, it's, let's, say, let's say it's $500 a month. Or 125 a week, but I'm pretty sure that his his landlord will let him go for 125, uh, not 125, 500 dollars a month. But like I said, they're not trying to hear situations like that. They're not trying to be realistic about situations like that. Yeah, she made four times his uh, the, the the income that he made, but he doesn't have as much debt as, or any type of debt that like she has. She has to take care of multiple children and try to pay off her student loan debt, and she's trying to buy a house. And realistically, she's only in the middle class range. So they're not really being realistic about their situation. And they got a nerd to complain about their dating experiences. So I'm, I'm laughing about all this, man. It is hilarious. Anyway, what do you guys think about this video? I've gone on long enough. I've ranted long enough. Uh, what do you think about this video? Um, let me know in the comments. And uh, this is all the time that I have for this video. If you would like to subscribe, you can do so. If you if you haven't subscribed, you should do so. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And you can support your boy by link in case you would decide you want to get into stocks. I have my cash app in the description in case you would like to donate to the channel and support the channel. I also have my book, a link to my book in the description, and I have a link to my um my website so you can buy some shirts and hats and all of those type of things and that's it you know that's all i can say i'll catch you guys in the next video peace